In this video, we're gonna go ahead and cover a double integral that you probably will never see in a Calculus 3 class. The integral looks very innocent. If you were to graph it, you'll notice that we're just trying to find the volume as x goes from zero to one and y goes from zero to one as well. Now, nothing looks difficult about it, but when you actually start solving it, first with respect to x and then with respect to y, things are gonna get a little interesting and we're gonna pay a visit to one of our very good friends, the Basel problem. Now at this point, I'm just hoping that if you have not taken a Calculus 3 class, you can sort of follow along and just understand that because we're integrating with respect to x initially, we're going to treat our y variable like a constant. So it just imagine like it, not necessarily that it doesn't exist, but we're not going to necessarily treat it like the variable that it is until we integrate with respect to y. So let's just go ahead and do this by starting a u substitution. We're going to make this value our u, giving us u equals 1 minus x y and now we're going to head uh, we're going to find our differential so our du is going to be negative y dx now remember the y is a constant so that's why it becomes negative y let's go ahead and move this to the other side and we have negative du over y is equal to our differential dx and that's exactly what we need so we have it right here then i wrote dy there but it should be du Okay, nothing too crazy about it so far, but let's just go ahead and change our parameters. Because when x is equal to zero, that's this bound right here, we're just gonna go ahead and plug it in here. We're gonna get that y or u is equal to one. And then when x is equal to one, well u is gonna be something a little different, which is gonna be one minus y. So we have one minus y. So let's go ahead and now rewrite our double integral here. Well, we still have the first one over here from integral from zero to one, but then we're going to change the other. Now we're going to go ahead and get the integral from one to one minus y, and then we're going to have one over u times our differential dx, which is this right here, negative d u over y, and then we still have with respect to y at the end. All right, as I mentioned, we're gonna treat y as a constant, so we're actually gonna move it on the outside, and we're gonna use this negative to our advantage so we can flip these right here and nothing necessarily changes. So we have the integral from zero to one of one over y, and then we have integral from one minus y to one of one over u du, and then we still have the dy. Well, let's just go ahead and start dealing with the first integral. Now we're prepped for that, because that's just gonna be a regular natural log integral. This is gonna be integral from zero to one. We have one over y, and then we have natural log of u, and we're still integrating from one minus y to y, and then we have dy right there. Okay, let's just go ahead and implement the first fundamental theorem of calculus. That's gonna give us zero to one. Ah, and I realized that I wrote our upper parameter should be one right here. That's gonna be important, otherwise we're gonna be in trouble. When you plug in, uh, we have the one over y, and then you have natural log of one, which is just zero, minus natural log of one minus y with respect to y. The zero is gonna go away, and now we have the integral from zero to one of negative natural log of one minus y over y with respect to y. And this is where things get really interesting. This is where I urge you to try to do this on your own. Perhaps a u substitution is gonna work, but you're gonna see that it's gonna become a little difficult. So we're gonna go ahead and pay our visit to the Basel problem, but first we need to talk about power series. This is a general power series right here from zero to infinity of x to the power of n and it becomes one plus x plus x squared and on and on. And this is actually equal to one over one minus x, provided that the absolute value of x is less than one. You can probably recognize this as a geometric series. Now, the fact that the absolute value of x needs to be less than one holds true, meaning that we can use it because we have from zero to one right here. Well, now we know that this series is equal to this. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is first, I'm just gonna rewrite this as a y, just so we can kind of recognize what's going on here. We have this is equal to one minus y. And now we're gonna go ahead and integrate both sides. Well, in this case, this is a simple uh, power rule. This will become the series from zero to infinity of y to the n plus one over n plus one. And this, if you were to work it out using u substitution, you'll notice that it's negative natural log of one minus y. And that is amazing. Why? Because that's what we have right here. So now we can go ahead and rewrite our integral as the integral from zero to one of, instead of this, we're gonna write this right here. So we have the sum from zero to infinity of y to the n plus one 
over n plus 1, and then this is now being divided by y, so we have the y here. We can use properties of exponents and just subtract these right here, so we'll get y to the power of n, and then the y on the bottom is going to go away, so we have the dy right here. Now, I'm going to do something that's typically unconventional, so hopefully someone here in the video can comment on the specific theorem that allows us to change this and why that's the case. It is my understanding that these functions um, is bounded. I don't know the, the best way to describe it, but if it's bounded, converges just fine, then we are allowed to switch these right here. I wanna say it's Fubini, Fubini's theorem perhaps, but I don't know if that's gonna be the case. But again, if someone is watching this video and knows the exact theorem, please let me know in the comments. All right, so let's go ahead and flip these around. So we have the sum from zero to infinity of the integral from zero to one of y to the power of n over n plus one with respect to y. Okay, now we can go ahead and integrate this. Let's go ahead and add one to the power divided by the new power. So we have the series from zero to infinity of y to the n plus one over, there's already an n plus one here, so now this becomes n plus one squared from zero to one. Well, we implement the first fundamental theorem of calculus. You plug in one here and you get the sum from zero to infinity of one over n plus one squared minus, and then you plug in zero and that goes away. So what we have right here is the Basel problem. If you were to plug in one, you would get one over one squared plus, and then you plug in one again, or I'm sorry, you start off with zero, one over one squared, start with one and you get one over two squared plus one over three squared and this just continues. And if you know anything about the Basel problem, this right here is equal to pi squared over six. And that's exactly what the volume of this particular shape is bounded by this region from zero to one in the x direction and zero to one in the y direction. And as you can see, probably not something you would have seen in a multivariable class or some people like to call it calculus three because it involves series, it's a little more complex than we typically see in that course, but let me know what you think. And that's gonna do it for today. I hope you guys had fun, and please, if you haven't done so, subscribe to this YouTube channel, or don't forget to follow me on Instagram and on TikTok, where I'm posting math content every single day. All right, I'll see you in the next one.